The New York Rangers got off to a solid start this season, but now they've lost their last two. John Chick of Locked On Rangers is going to talk about what they need to do to get back on track and be the team they think they can be. All that and more coming up on today's Locked On NHL podcast. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Gil Martin here and welcome everybody to the Monday edition of the Locked On NHL Podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everyone who makes Locked On NHL your first listen every day. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you get new episodes as soon as they drop. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You could start the season with a big return on FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet, and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets. If you win that first $5 bet, visit FanDuel.com to get started. It is my pleasure to welcome back to the show the host of Locked On New York Rangers, John Chick. And, John, nice start to this four-game West Coast trip, but not a great finish, losing the last two what was the big difference in the last couple of games? Yeah, I think it's kind of just a culmination of some uh, unfortunate storylines that have kind of plagued this team pretty much for, you know, just about the entire season. It's the combination of, first of all, I would say certainly over relying on both of your goalies. I can't tell you how many times that uh, Igor and Quick have both had to stand on their head. Just, you know, the Ranger defense are not doing a good job defending the front of the net. You get the forwards not back checking nearly as hard or as quickly as they need to. And, you know, that's obviously part of it. They, you know, there, there's been times where the goalies have been great and really bailed them out. But these last two games, I think, are proof that, you know, they're, they're not superheroes. You know, they need a little bit of assistance and they just didn't get it. And, um, you know, I, I think in general, just certain players underperforming. You know, you look at, um, you know, that the supposed top line for the Rangers and it being Mika and Kreider and Smith. And they're just not getting nearly enough from those guys. Uh, Chris Kreider somehow still does not have an assist this season. He's got nine goals. But that almost does not even seem possible. And Mika Zibanejad has really kind of uh, come under fire from Ranger fans because there's just too many games where he's just kind of drifting around out there. doesn't really seem to have any purpose, any real fire when he's on the ice. So uh, people are upset about that. And you've also got some uh, defensemen that are underperforming. I mean, Jacob Truba at this point, like, I'm not even sure if it's underperforming anymore. That might just kind of be where he's at right now. Um, so there's that. I mean, Ryan Lindgren had to work his way back from an injury, but he hasn't been great since he got back. And Miller, you know, he'll have a good game, he'll have a bad game, he'll have a good game, he'll have a bad game, back and forth, up and down we go. Um, so, yeah, man, it, it's really just the sum of all the parts right now. And um, you add on that uh, also the fact that, you know, the power play is really sputtering right now, and the Rangers usually have a lethal power play, and they do rely on that for offense, and that's not happening right now either. So, um, yeah, it, it's been it's been rough uh, these last couple of games here for sure. How much of that do you think is coaching? Uh, a little bit. I, I had like a mini call out of, of, you know, Peter Laviolette and the coaching staff. I did a Sunday episode here, uh, you know, this morning. Um, you know, part of it, and I don't know how much exactly, like what percentage of this falls on the coaches and what percentage of it falls on the players. But I will say something that's been a big time issue for this team. They have been getting off to just atrocious starts this season. And there's certain games, you know, depending on who you're playing and depending on, to what degree you find your game a little bit later as the contest goes on, you can sometimes survive that. You know, you can have a bad first period against, you know, some random team from the Western Conference that, you know, probably isn't going to be a playoff team and be down one nothing, and then come back and win it pretty convincingly. But as we've seen these last couple of games here, um, you know, falling behind 2 nothing to the Flames. Now, they came back and tied that, but it was all too little too late. The Flames won. They deserve to win. Good on them for doing that. And then this game against the Oilers, that game was over by the end of the first period. The Rangers played so poorly in the first period. Uh, I was still scoreless until three or four minutes ago, but then, you know, the Oilers score and then they score again with eight seconds left and the vibes were just terrible. It just felt like it wasn't going to be their night. So uh, the bad starts are, are certainly an issue right now. And I mean, I don't know, 50, 50, part of it on the coaching, part of it on the players, but you know, LaViolette, you know, he's had a lot of success. He's known as being like a, a very good motivator uh, to me. You know, I'm going to say it's more on the players than the coaching staff at this point. What is going on right now with Capo Caco? They can't seem to find a position for him. The funny thing is Caco has played probably about as well as any Ranger forward recently. Um, and, you know, part of that might be a little bit of an indictment on certain players. But Caco, honestly, like, it's easy to look at his stats and be underwhelmed by it. But when you just, like, look at him, like, 
as a hockey player and, and you forget about like the offensive numbers so much. There's a guy that's been pretty valuable to the Rangers this season. That third line, the way it started, you had Cooley and Heedle and Kako. They were, they, they had a, a stretch that went on forever. And obviously heedle has been out of the, the lineup, but they went like, you know, however many games it was before Heedle got injured, I think like 10 or 11 games, they were not on the ice for a goal against in that entire stretch. And that line defends very well. Uh, they work very hard on the four check. It feels like they spend the entirety of their shifts in the offensive zone. And that's continued even without Heedle. And Kako has been a big part of that. As far as him playing center, it's been interesting. And, you know, I'm talking about Heedle here. That's part of the reason why I think the Rangers made that change. You're without Philip Heedle. There's not really an obvious uh, answer as far as who now centers the third line. You could go with Johnny Brodzinski, and they did that for a couple of games. Um, but Kako, I feel like they've almost been wanting to take him for a test ride there anyway. So it's like, well, Heedle's hurt. We're not really sure when he's going to come back. That's a whole story in and of itself. You know, with um, this most recent one, apparently, is not a concussion. But all the head injuries that he's had. Uh, yeah, I mean, th th this was the time to do it, to give it a shot. He's been good as far as faceoffs are concerned. And like I said, that line, that third line, whatever iteration of it you get, I worry about them about as little as like any other Ranger skaters right now. They they've been very good. And um, yeah, I think overall Kako, he, he played it in the past, just not in the NHL. Uh, but so far, so good for the, the Kako experiment at center. Backup goalies, you know, it's not an easy job. You may only play once a week, sometimes even less. Jonathan Quick, a 185 goals against average, a 943 save percentage. Talk to me about what he's meant to this Ranger team so far this year. Yeah, and the crazy part about that, Gil, is that in this most recent game that he went there, went out there, the most recent game that he played, he allowed six goals, and his numbers are still that good. Like, that's yeah. just wild to think about, especially this early in the season when, you know, the goals against, the save percentage, they can jump around a little bit when it's early in the year. But no, he's been awesome. And on top of everything that he's done on the ice and basically, like, resurrected his career, I mean, you know, he's an all-time great regardless of what was going to happen with the Rangers. But the last, like, three or four seasons before he got here, it was not really all that pretty for Jonathan Quick. Uh, he's adjusted to life as a backup, and he's done a great job. Um, they needed him to step into the lineup. He played three straight games last year when Igor was really in a funk, and that was huge. And by all accounts, great locker room guy as well. Uh, Big-time motivator during the playoff run last year. So can't say enough about him, man. He's been awesome. He's done a, a heck of a job. And, um, you know, it, he's on the last year of his deal, and we'll see what happens. I don't even know if he wants to play after this year. I mean, you know, he, he hasn't said one way or another, but – if the Rangers wanted to offer him another one one year, like in season extension, like they did last year, sign me up. I'll, I'll take him back and I'll take that little bit of a risk. You know, the fact that he is getting older, but it just goes to show, man. No matter what the sport is or what position somebody plays, never bet against an all time great. They'll figure out a way to get the absolute most out of whatever they've got left, and um, we're seeing that right now with Jonathan Quick. Another guy who's really shined for the Rangers are Tammy Panarin. 26 points in 19 games, 12 of them goals. What is he doing so well? Yeah, it's just a pleasure to watch. Uh, and it's one of those reminders to, I think, never take him for granted. One thing that he started doing last year, and it's carried over into this year as well, it's something that I've been talking about, honestly, since like this podcast started. Like I have always wanted to see him shoot a little bit more often. And, you know, on one hand, you don't want to like, you know, mess with this game too much because it's Panera and he racks up all these points. But He's such a selfless player that you know how much he wants to, you know, set up his buddies for these easy tip-in goals or th these deflections or, you know, whatever it might be. Um, but, man, like, he he's just too good of a shooter to not take advantage of that. Henrik Lundqvist, you know, they there was a little bit of crossover there where they were teammates for a couple of years. He said, like, after he retired that going up against, you know, Rangers in practice, he said Panarin had the most accurate shot out of anybody that he's ever faced. And this is a guy that's known more for passing than he is for shooting. So that's been awesome to see him shoot. And, um, you know, just somebody that he can make it work with anybody. You know, you can put anybody out there, old guy, young guy, big guy, smaller guy, finesse guy, uh, shooter, playmaker, whatever it is. You can put any two forwards on the line with Artemi Panarin, and he'll figure out a way to make it work. And, um, you know, one of the biggest things that I think he's done is to help unlock Alexi Lafreniere, you know, last year and, and certainly into this year as well. That's been huge for the Rangers. What is it going to take for this team to find its consistency right now? Just bring a little bit more intensity, a little bit more fire. You know, there, there's people that are saying like, oh, you know, they're frauds and this and that. It's like, I'm not going to go that far yet. I mean, this they've lost two in a row. It's their first losing streak of the season. It's the first time they've lost back-to-back -back games. So as much as you can critique this team, as much as I've critiqued this team, things could be a lot worse. I mean, we're talking about a team that's 12-6-1 here. So it's not like they're, you know, dead and buried in the standings. 
But man, they got to get off to better starts because yes, you might be able to get away with it against, you know, some, you know, bottom five, bottom 10 team in the league. You're not going to get away with it against like these other top tier teams in the Metro. You're not going to get away with it against a team like the Panthers that knocked you out of the playoffs last year. Um, You know, they played the Jets not too long ago and basically got run out of the building six to three. That was not a good performance. So when you're going up against those top teams, you cannot afford these bad starts because they're like sharks that smell blood. Like they, and I'm sure if I'm aware of this, the fact that the Rangers are getting off to bad starts, their opponents are aware of it too. And they know that, okay, if we take it to these guys early, you know, we might be off to the races. And we've seen that a couple of times. Um, so yeah, just step up the intensity. I mean, there's other things too, obviously, but that's a big one for me. You've got to get off to better starts. It, if it happens once in a while, fine. For this to happen two games in a row though, in Calgary and then in Edmonton, that's where it starts to get really bad. And that's where I think Ranger fans, uh, start to lose their patience a little bit. John, why don't you tell our viewers and our listeners where they could find the podcast and where they could find you on social media? Yeah, anywhere you're uh, listening to this or watching this, you can find Locked on Rangers there as well. We're on YouTube. We're on every audio streaming platform that you can possibly think of. And as far as social media, you can find me on Twitter, at jchick 17 And um, yeah, give me a follow, talk some hockey, and uh, yeah, good times. All right, John, thanks so much. All right, thanks for having me, Gil. Today's episode is brought to you by your friends at Prize Picks. You can now win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. Prize Picks is the best place to get real money sports action. Join over 10 million users and sign up today. And Prize Picks always puts their members first, so all withdrawals are fast, safe, and secure. When my picks hit, I can get my money in as quick as 15 minutes. All you have to do is Guess whether or not players will be over or under their prize picks proje- projections. So will Jack Hughes get more than four shots on goal? And are Terry Panarin get more than one assist in a game? These are the kind of bets you have to make on prize picks. Download the app today and use code LOCKEDONNHL. You'll get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Again, download the prize picks app. Use code LOCKEDONNHL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Prize picks run your game. 